Hey everybody, welcome back to the Linux Cast. I'm Matt. And I'm Tyler. How is everybody doing? I am uh for before we uh move into what we did on Linux this week, um there have been questions about the live streaming of the podcast. And the honest to god truth is that we have no clue what we're doing. Um mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know I mean Tyler that doesn't really come as a surprise to you <laughs> that we don't know. I, I, I would hope people expect that's what we're doing. <laughs> yes. I mean, we just have no clue what we're doing when it comes to streaming. So as of right now, the plan is to stream every other podcast. Um, it's not that streaming adds difficulty, it add, but it does add time. Uh, and it also requires us to actually, you know, be on time. <laughs> so, uh, this way, it will at least lower expectations just a little bit, and we can, uh, you know, work our way up to the point where maybe we stream every podcast, but right now, every other one. And if we miss one, we apologize. We, we'll, we, we'll, we're will we working on it. Ooh. We're not professionals. We're half professionals. Um, <laughs> That's for uh, damn sure. <laughs> Uh, and maybe half is being overly generous. I don't know. <laughs> Especially for me. I don't know about you, about you, but I don't consider myself a pro. I was, uh, just about I, anything. I watched a little bit of uh, Gardner Bryant's, the, the Linux Gamers, live stream this morning. He was editing one of his videos. He does that from time to time. And the way he edits videos make it look like a professional's editing videos. <laughs> it's just he has all these key bindings memorized and stuff. And like, man, I need, I want to be that guy when I grow up. <laughs> <laughs> um, half the half the time, I have to, so there's a key binding in Caden Live, and it's the letter Z. For whatever reason, that letter Z deletes like the first ten seconds of a video. Um. Ooh. Yeah, and I don't. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what it's actually supposed to do, but that's the end result. Is it deletes the first ten seconds of the video, and because it's right next to X, which I use all the time for you know, hey, I'm always messing around and accidentally hitting the Z, and that means that every once in a while I'll get all the way to the end of the video. I've done all the editing and getting out all the ums and ahs and you knows out of the <laughs> out, out of there, and. Uh, I have to go back to the beginning to check to make sure that I haven't deleted, accidentally deleted that first 10 seconds of the video because then I have to start all the way over again or I have to try to line up, you know, a, a new part of the thing. I'm sure there's easier ways to do it. I'm just too much of a dumbass to learn how to actually use Caden Live. Uh, anyways, <laughs> I watched, I was watching him. I was like, oh, he's doing this. Now that's a professional right there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, anyways, Tyler. <laughs> Oh, well, I guess we'll just say this is a Linux cast. We talk about Linux stuff. Well, yada, 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 yada. Um, Tyler, what have you done this week in Linux? Good question. Um, not almost anything at all. Um, today is going to be the day um, I've been outside working. Like I didn't have much time to prep for this podcast, uh, which is why I was a little bit late. Matt knows I was a tad bit late. Sorry, man. Um, I was so I'm what I'm going to be doing in Linux is I'm I'm going to take this desktop apart so I can rewire it so I can have the front panel connectors actually working and I I need to do some better cable management uh, slap my Quadro card in here so I can pipe my um, the Fire Pro that I have into like a VM for stuff that I want to do eventually. Um, But I'm also going to be installing um, actual just plan nine inside of a VM because I don't know how many people know this, but I accepted a deal to spend a week in plan nine. And I have been, I've been using nine front on this laptop here. And that's essentially all the computing stuff that I've been doing this week. Um, I spent a lot of time. I was, I was binge watching a show on Netflix and, um, I took up a considerable amount of my week, yeah, but can can you watch Netflix on Plan Nine? No, nah, bro, no, <laughs> dude. The internet doesn't even work on this thing. So when it comes to Plan Nine and everything, Plan Nine, if you're if you're interested in minimalist operating systems, um, you definitely need to check out Plan Nine. Plan Nine is very interesting. Um, the way it makes use of your mouse is really cool, but when it comes to hardware support, um, plan nine, if you're running anything that's newer than shit, bro, 15 years, then it, it, it just ain't 
ain't even going to work. The odds that anything that's not PS2 is going to work on Plan 9 is zero. Uh, it, uh, modern hardware support on Plan 9 does not exist. However, there is this nifty little fork of Plan 9 called Nine Front, which their website is atrocious. I watched but, part of that stream. That was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, their website is wow. But Nine Front adds a lot of hardware support, and so you should be able to get modern stuff working on it. Uh, on my desktop, it it actually boots, but the USB keyboard that I use doesn't for some reason. So I can't use it. Or I, I should rephrase that. Any, any USB device that I try and boot off of this main, like my main desktop, nothing happens. Won't work. On my Dell laptop here, the, uh, man, the kernel wouldn't even load. It, it just wouldn't even, not a kernel panic, just nothing. On this thing, it boots up. The Wi-Fi device in here should have support it doesn't. So there's no internet. I, I can't get internet on uh, Plan 9. And that being said, you can browse the web on Plan 9, but with how bloated and modern, th there's no JavaScript support. Like, there's just none in Plan 9. So, I mean, you can imagine, you can knock off, like, you can imagine I instantly hundreds of websites just aren't even going to load. Mm. So it's a pretty unusable system when it comes to, like, modern stuff. But if you want something to script, the uh, one thing about Plan 9, like, plumbing is really cool. Like, you can do some research into the plumbing on Plan 9. Very interesting. Um it's a very in very well integrated uh, system, and the way it's meant to be used is very different. Very cool. Um, but when it comes to Linux, I haven't done much. And until Saturday, the only thing that I'm going to be doing Linux-wise is using Linux as a bootloader into Plan 9, which is yay. By the way, thank you, Joshua, for your Patreon donation. And my week in Plan 9 has definitely been eventful. Thank you, brother. Every time we talk about this, first of all, I still can't believe that happened. I mean, it was like live on t uh, live on TV. Uh, and second of all, you still should have asked for more money. <laughs> like every time I come back, like like fifty dollars just wouldn't have been enough. Like, <laughs> um, well, speaking of asking for more money, Dylan has offered. Um, he will most likely be giving me three hundred dollars, so I spend a month in Windows Eleven when it drops. So I will most likely be spending a month in Windows 11, obviously for money, because I wouldn't do it for free. But <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how that goes. <laughs> Tyler's pimping himself out to use other operating systems. <laughs> hey, man, I'm not opposed to making that dollar dollar. And <laughs> oh, God, that's hilarious. Um, okay. <laughs> All right. So what have you been up to? All right, so I, oh God, I've been for the last two weeks, really trying to get Arctic Linux to work. And I made a video about this, so I'm not going to go through and rehash everything. But I've tried tried multiple ISOs. I've tried multiple ways of installing. Uh, I've only succeeded in installing it twice: once in the VM, once with XFC, and then Light DM screwed me over. Uh, and you know. Uh, last night, or I guess it was the night before last, you know, I just threw in the towel and I was just, I was done with it. So I made a video and, uh, said Sinara, I've n now installed open Sousa on my hard drive that I use for reviews on this computer. And it's great. Um, open Sousa is fantastic. Uh, the only downside I've noticed so far with open Sousa is that, um, zip their, their mirrors that zipper uses really slow. I mean, just nope. astonishingly slow. Um, and, um, you know, that's fine. I can put up with that. I don't install enough software for that to be a real big thing. The one thing that I find absolutely hilarious is, is that if you know anything about the discover software center, which is what KDE uses, it's, atro it's atrocious on its best day. Like it's mm -hmm. so bad. Um, it's easily the worst part of a KDE plasma installed. The, the, their, I mean, it, don't get me wrong. It's gotten better over the last couple of years and you can tell they're working on it. But it's still bad because the mirrors on OpenSUSE are so bad, it makes it a hundred times worse because nothing 
ever loads. <laughs> I mean, it's like ever loads. I, like I had it open for 10 minutes. It was still loading. And I have good internet. Like I have good internet. I mean, it's not gigabit internet or anything, but I get 200 megabits or, you know, supposedly that's what I pay for, you know, yeah. but you know, I have good internet, so I should, you know, theoretically be okay. But the mirrors are so bad, whether or not it's just because they're so far away and maybe they don't have anything, you know, regional here, or it's just because they're slow internet at the site. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, the the mirrors on OpenSUSE are are slow. Uh, but other than that, I've actually really liked OpenSUSE at least up until yesterday when I uh, installed Win Awesome Window Manager, and then I did uh I got OBS running, and it showed that it was recording, and it sh showed the preview in the preview pane. So I went through and did a rising video you know, for an awesome window manager. And it was, you know, going to be another time last one that I kind of enjoy making. And then, you know, I saved it onto, you know, one of the hard drives of my computer and went back into Arco because that's where I wanted to edit it. And I found out that the damn thing didn't record anything but the audio. And that just, I mean, <laughs> so mad. I like, like, I was just seriously pissed off. And I don't think that it has anything to do with OpenSUSE. I think it has something to do with open with all the with the package of Awesome Window Manager that they allow you to download. It has some kind of dependency that just isn't there, or maybe it's a OBS problem. I don't know, but it was a pain in the ass. So, uh, yeah, okay. I've had some very interesting times with Linux. Uh, the, the thing is, so the way I have my computer set up is I have. Let's see, I have the MVME, which is my main drive, and that has Arco on it. And Arco is going to stay there forever and ever and ever because it works. <laughs> like everything, mm -hmm. I have everything here, it works. And I'm going to stay there until it stops working. Uh, and I, 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 like, I used to be a big hopper, just like you are. And I like you, mm -hmm. I would hop from place to place. Uh, but now that I got Arc working on this hard drive, I'm leaving it there. It's I'm not touching it. That's why I installed that. I actually bought a second. So I also have two like big storage hard drives and another uh, SSD that I store videos and stuff on. But then I bought another SSD, and I'm using that for the other hard drive, other distros, so I can try other distros. So that's where I put OpenSUSE. Um, that that's been my experience with Linux lately. Is just installing stuff that doesn't like me. Because everybody, everybody always says, like, Arctic's is fine, you can get it installed. But I, for whatever reason, things that are non-systemd don't like this computer. Like, uh, I tried Void. Like, everybody says Void is really easy to install. Like, I went through the install process. I agree, it's easy to install if it succeeds. Uh, and mm -hmm. it didn't succeed for me. And I don't, I, everyone's calling, well, you're a dumbass. Well, I mean, sure. Uh, yeah, uh, I totally agree. But <laughs> might, but, but that that doesn't solve the rest of the issues. <laughs> like, uh, like the dumbass here can I can learn like I can read the documentation I follow the instructions and it still doesn't work. Okay, so yeah, that's that's been my experience with uh, Arctic. Uh, it, it got so bad that I thought my computer was broken. Like I thought that that was the problem was the a computer. Like because I tried different USB sticks. So I thought, well, you know these USB sticks are old. You know, they're, I got like five of them for like 10 bucks at Amazon. They're El Cheapos. So like, you know, maybe it's bad. So I tried another one. Same shit was happening. So I was like, oh God, maybe the USB thing on my you know, controller or whatever on my computer is going bad. Uh, so I downloaded a different, I don't know. So you know, screw it. I'm going to open SUSE. Work fine. So yeah. Oh, I hate Linux. <laughs> <laughs> Why, why don't we do a podcast on Windows, man? Nothing ever goes wrong on Windows, Dude, right? There you go. There you go. You could get paid. You could get paid to use Windows for a month and suffer <laughs> through it. You know? Uh, yeah, but it wouldn't be... I'd need more than three. Like, I'm always, I'm always looking for more money, man. I got, like, I'm not cheap. But whatever Tyler gets, I have to have more. I'm sorry. That's just the way it is. <laughs> you, see, see, hear that. Now, everyone who's watching this, just know if you need someone to do something for you, cheap, I'm the one to hit up. And then if you just want to see Matt suffer through something, you can pay a premium <laughs> and have him do it. $375, I think, is the goal for uh, um, Gen 2. So uh, apparently I'm not that expensive because I'm really, I, I, you know, I'm going to get there right someday and I'm going to really regret not sending that goal higher. 
<laughs> well, the funny part is, is like, I mean, with as with as many people as we have, like collectively as a as a community, there is definitely going to be just one of them who is like, I've got paid. I got a bonus for Christmas. I've got two thousand extra dollars. Two hundred dollars ain't that much, and they'll just do it one time. So you'll hit that goal and have to spend a week in Gen Two. Oh no, I did not say I was going to spend a week in Gen Two. I said I would install Gen Two. Uh, I, I I don't know about that, man. I think people complain about it. Hey, you <laughs> you know got to install it the, and use it. The goal has been clearly stated on Patreon for like six months. So <laughs> it's been there. I have not changed it. It's okay. Uh, if I got, The thing is, though, if I got it successfully installed and it was on hardware, I wouldn't mind spending probably some time in it. I don't know about a week, but a couple days. Uh, and if it went well, I'd continue on. Uh, the, the minute Ooh. something went wrong though oh you know the funny thing is so uh arch center <laughs> he, mm-hmm. he spent three days installing gen 2 on two computers and mm-hmm. he streamed most of that and that scared me the fuck away like i got mm-hmm. granted he has a like it was a really old computer like a, it was like a, a, a like a 10 year old or five year or so, whatever it was like a second gen i7 or something so oh. mine would be faster but that scared the crap out of me mm-hmm Oh, well, I mean, as soon as you hop on Gen 2, I mean, the, the thing that everyone does that's sort of like a staple of Gen 2 is you install the binary version of Firefox so that you can get all your other shit installed. But then eventually you need to actually compile Firefox for your computer. And so just compile it and then fall asleep. And hopefully when you wake up the next morning, everything went successfully and you have Firefox compiled. Or your house is burned down because your computer has been at 100% CPU usage for the last 12 hours. We just won't talk about that possibility being very, very real. We just <laughs> won't talk about it. <laughs> I hope you have really good cooling. <laughs> <laughs> or, or at least a, a glass, per, some kind of side panel on your computer, right, Tyler? So that the dust doesn't get in there and create a fire hazard. Yep. <laughs> well, I mean, that's, that's sort of the thing that's funny about uh, like running your system like that is... Really, in all honesty, if you wanted to know for a fact that you have good airflow in your case and that it's actually clean, just do a Gen 2 install and then compile Firefox. If everything went fine there and temps weren't scary, you're good, you're good man. You, you, there's nothing else that you can do with that machine that's going to cause a problem. You're fine. My computer often sounds like a fucking airplane when I render a video <laughs> so <laughs> like i mean it's fine but the airflow in this case is not good it's a it's a nzxt uh, h510 i think and it just has no flow on the top uh whereas you have a ton of flow but you know I, I make fun of you because you have you know no panel but i mean people have open air builds like mm-hmm. there are open air cases i don't understand these people they have to be like uber like neat freaks because i mean I just like like I could dust today and there'd be dust here tomorrow. Uh, it, it's the perils of living on a dirt road, you know. <laughs> like you yeah, you're, you're going to yeah. have dust. Uh, so I could never have an open air build even if it was just an accidental open air build like yours is. So mm-hmm. all right. Uh, <laughs> I I really do have to be out of here in like half an hour so. <laughs> so uh, we, Guess we better should, get on it. Move on. I mean, we can't we can't bullshit like normally do. I mean, if if I'm late I'm late. Who gives a shit? All right, anyways. Uh, if you want to get in contact with us, you can do so at the LinuxCast on Twitter. Uh, you can subscribe to all of our audio feeds and stuff like that at the LinuxCast.org. That just transfers you to our, our, our to our um, anchor.fm page for now. Eventually, there will be a website there, but what, yada, yada, yada. Whatever. Stop promising something that's never going to happen, man. Uh, you can contact us via email at email at the LinuxCast.org. You can support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. I will thank all of our patrons at the end. You can follow Tyler, who goes by Zany on the internet, on YouTube, and on Odyssey. And you can also get um, follow him on uh, his Discord server, which you can find a link for in the video description. All those links were in the video description because none of them are pretty. And you can also subscribe to the Linux cast on Twitter at youtube.com slash Linux cast. Uh, we're like, I mean, we just passed 4,700. So, um, mm-hmm. by the end of like October, as long as everything continues the way it is, 5,000 is within reach, which is just, I mean, completely and utterly fucking mind blowing. 
I mean, <laughs> I can't believe I'm almost to a thousand. Like that is yes, nuts to all me. Right, well, screw Matt and his five thousand. If you haven't yet, subscribe to Tyler because he's like this freaking close. Like he's like like eight hundred like and fifty or something like that. Mm-hmm. Something uh, like that. You know, so he's like hundred and fifty away from a thousand. You need to go subscribe to his channel, and you need to do it now. Stop listening to this nonsense. Go to YouTube. <laughs> And subscribe. Then you can come back and listen to the rest of this nonsense. But he, his, chan- his channel is awesome. The link for that will be in the video description. So go do that. Um, and make sure you listen to some of his stuff. Because his live sc- his live streams that he does. Mm, pure and utter entertainment, man. Especially if you can get him going on a rant. If you, you can get him ranting about... Um, Microsoft. I mean, <laughs> logging in. Having, requiring a, an account on GitHub to... Uh, use the dark mode i i'm telling you man at least two hours long of him just i mean <laughs> you'll know he's gonna go on a rant because he'll hit the button on his desk so it rises up so he because he, he, he needs to rant with his whole body so he moves around as he's ranting and just oh it's pure and utter gold you need to go go subscribe all right now that I've done my shilling for the day, it's time to move on to the news. All right. So each and every week, Tyler and I uh, search for news items. And you'll notice something with both of these links that neither of them are news. Um, not really. So uh, we had a hard time finding news links this week. So we chose something different. So, Tyler, why don't you tell us what you found this week that you found interesting? Well, um, I came across this little article here, and it's about um, how to install the um Technically, it is the latest, but I think we're on like 14.8 or something like that. But it's how to install the um, 5.14 kernel on Ubuntu and Linux Mint. And I think articles and sort of basic tutorials like this on uh, upgrading your kernel on Ubuntu, Linux Mint, distributions like this are great because a lot of the complaints that I that I hear and personally have with um, Ubuntu and the stable distributions is it's it would be really nice to have a much later kernel a because I mean dude between 5.11 and 5.14 the actual kernel itself has much much more support for things like this Dell laptop and so being able to update the kernel on those those particular distributions is amazing and quite frankly is it it helps a lot so if you're having any issues or weird annoying things that you know you can definitely live with but try updating your kernel if you're running ubuntu try it most likely it's going to fix that weird annoying bug or whatever that you're having to deal with try it out um I did that on uh, elementary OS, updated the kernel to something much newer, and uh, it's much nicer. Uh, it just, it's nice. So if you haven't done this, do it. And then you don't necessarily have to thank me at all because I'm not the one who wrote the nice article telling you how to do it. I'm just the one who pointed it out. Yeah. Uh, it's really weird when you're on a distribution long enough for there to be a new kernel. <laughs> like it used to be. <laughs> I think I went years without seeing like a, a kernel, up, like a, a true kernel update, like a major version. Like, oh, I just said like dot releases or whatever, but like a major cool. release. I went years because I always hopped so much. I was always installing a newer kernel when I, you know, eventually came back to an Arch-based distro because I always came back to an Arch-based distro. Um, yeah, so that's uh, very interesting. I, I don't think that I've ever compiled a kernel on my own, though, like and actually been successful like because... With Arch, you just, you know, update and it does it for you. So yeah. that can be really And, cool. and I, w- I will say one thing. When it comes to compiling your own kernel, it's normally not ever going to be as difficult as people make it out to be. As long as you don't go through there and carve out support for everything you think you don't need. Um because a lot of the times, a lot of the times, people compiling their own kernel will just remove stuff that they think they don't need, but they do. Uh, and like that's the problem when compiling a lot of kernel. I, t- I try to tell people this: if you don't know what it is and you're not positive that you know what it is, don't remove support for it. Just don't. That's what's going to cause a lot of. A lot of hard. I mean, that's what a lot of people, when it comes to installing Gentoo, mess up on. They do a proper Gentoo install, 
but then the co- the kernel they compile for they remove support for stuff that they clearly like. I mean, you can remove support for ACPI if you ne- if you wanted to. I don't know why you do it, but you can. Uh, so I don't know. It's just one of those things where try not to com- remove stuff that you don't need. Still, even then, compiling your own kernel is not as easy as just installing a package on Arch. Like no, 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 no. Arch is the lazy man's distro. It's for me. Like I get new mm-hmm. kernels, I don't have to do anything for them. I just do inst- update. I don't like. I don't even have to do sudo pacman dash you know s y y u. I just have to do update because this man has an alias. You know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you, there you like, go. Uh, like I am the the, the laziest of men. <laughs> and, and you know, semi proud of it. Like I work hard at my mm-hmm. laziness. <laughs> okay. Like, I mean, you can be successful at anything, and if being successful at laziness is your thing, then do. Do it. Cause like it a, it's like a participation award or a, <laughs> a certificate of attendance. You know, you, you were there. You showed up. That's all that matters. All right. Uh, uh, my link for this week is also – well, I mean, it's kind of news. So the news comes at the end of the article. Budgie, or the guys behind Budgie, are sick of GTK uh, and the Gnome Foundation – so they have decided to move to enlightenment based uh like widgets and stuff like that. So it'll be interesting to see what becomes a budgie because budgie has been based on GTK since its inception and uh-huh. um it relies on the software stack of GNOME which is all made up of GTK 3 and 4 uh, applications. So it'll be interesting to see cuz they're going to have to go through and rewrite all of those from scratch. Yep. Uh, so it'll be very interesting. If you want to read a very, very good article uh, from a developer who knows what he's talking about, about the problems that they have with GNOME and their uh, insistence on uh, doing things their own way, you should definitely check out this article here. Uh, it's very, very good. And it's not... It's not it's not a rage quit. Like it's not so inflammatory that, you know, his rage gets in the middle of his argument. He has really good points here and he tries to do it in a polite and, you know, way to, you know, everything. So, uh, it was really good. So I would definitely go through and read that. I'm showing it on the screen now, but the link will be in the show notes as usual. Um, and like I said, we've been talking about Gnome having problems, uh, with, lack of customization for ages and the bottom line of this article and everything we've said is that the gnome foundation the the developers behind gnome and gtk and all those they don't care Mm -hmm. like they don't care that their user base wants these things because they have a vision and their vision is to have a system that is locked down as possible because they want their vision to be the only way you can use your computer. And if, if you're going to use your own, they don't care that there's other things. They, they'll, they'll tell you that if you don't like it, go use something else. And mm-hmm. that, you know, that's an attitude. I mean, I'm not saying it's a good or bad attitude, whatever. Uh, mm-hmm. But that's definitely the way the GNOME Foundation and the, and the GNOME developers have been for years, even though they continually take out things that people like and mm-hmm. do so for weird reasons. So instead of making their desktop environment faster by you know actually making it good what they've done is gone through and completely ripped out many many features in order to make it faster Mm -hmm. Um, and developers who are listening to this please take what we're saying to heart if you're going to base your project off of something else you probably don't want to base it off of the project of developers who do not care what their community want much less what other developers who are going to use their work what you need or what you want out of gtk or gnome you probably shouldn't base your project off another project that the developers openly blatantly don't give two shits what anyone thinks about what they want or should do so just say yeah it'd be so nice because gtk has some good stuff in it like it's a good solid library and stuff that has a lot of building blocks for applications that you know developers like to use Uh, it would be nice if somebody who was big enough and had the, the resources to do so came along and forked it Mm-hmm. And uh, 
and then truly made it a community project where people could actually contribute to it. Because people contribute out from outside of the GNOME Foundation and the main de GNOME developers. People contribute to GNOME and GTK and stuff. But because the the people who are in charge are so tight-fisted with it, a lot of the improvements and stuff and the suggestions for making it better get completely rejected because it doesn't line up with their vision of how they want GNOME and GTK to go. And this wouldn't be a big problem if this was, uh, you know, whatever, Joe Schmo's uh, building library or whatever, if nobody used it. The problem is, is that the biggest distributions in our world use GNOME, Ubuntu, mm -hmm. Fedora. You know, you just name them right down the line. I mean, and it's not even the ones that are just based on GNOME. It's, you know, things like Mate, XFCE, Cinnamon. They all use GTK. And they're mm -hmm. all reliant on this one small group of developers to do whatever they want to do. And if your distribution disagrees with that vision, but you don't have the resources to transition to something that's not GTK or uh, you don't want may, maybe you really like GTK and, you know, you want to continue to use it, but you have things that you need to do. You have to find ways of working around those limitations on your own. For example, adding a dark mode is not something that GNOME supports or GTK supports. Mm -hmm. Anything, any div distribution that shifts with a, a dark mode, whether it's elementary or Ubuntu, those developers had to do that on their own. And mm -hmm. it is it is a hack because the GNOME Foundation, the GTK guys, have gone out of their way to make it as hard as possible to institute a dark mode. Um, mm -hmm. So that is, I mean... It's just the reality of it, and it's this is why it matters so much that it's and why it's so important for when these developers have these experiences for them to be as loud as possible about it because it gets people talking about it, and hopefully, eventually, maybe it will get d distributions like Ubuntu to maybe consider transitioning away from GTK and and you know now. Personally, I don't think that's ever going to happen. Uh, if they were going to choose KDE, they would have done it back when they were switching away from Unity. I still think that they should have. I mean, I think they would have been so much happier. But it's not as if KDE and Cute don't have their own problems with licenses and shit and nonsense like that. So, I mean, maybe there's not a perfect... It, it'd be hilarious if at the end of the day, the Enlightenment stuff ended up being the, the solution. Because, you know, Enlightenment's... I mean, if you've ever used, like, the Enlightenment desktop, that thing is old as fuck. <laughs> mm -hmm. like, and it looks mm -hmm. old as fuck. And even forks of it, like the, I, th I think they call it the Maksha, um desktop environment. It's on um, Bodhi Linux. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, even that thing looks really, really dated. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's really, really weird. Right, it's 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 a weird oh. desktop environment. It, fe it feels like it just hopped straight out of the early two thousands. Yeah, that's exactly it's what it feels like. Very, the only thing I will say about it is that it's not skeuomorphic. It's very very flat. So mm -hmm. it, it you know it deals with the flat thing really well. Um, uh, it, it just would be really funny if though if those if the stuff behind Enlightenment was the thing that ended up winning in the end because it's more open than anything else, mm -hmm. even though it's been around for ages and ages um, forever. And I think what you said about, um, enlightenment possibly being like the perfect is a good transition into like the main topic for today, which, um, is, uh, unless I'm wrong here, it's, uh, my distro is better than your distro. Um, I don't know, like I, you might disagree with me here, but, like I, I think the problem that people perceive with Linux, where there's you know too much choice, um, is sort of the the rebuttal to well, there's not ever going to be a perfect distro. There's there's not ever going to be the perfect solution because there's there's no way you can have a perfect solution when the people who are going to use it are not perfect. Every single person has a different opinion. Um, on how stuff should be, on how stuff should work. I mean, to be honest, there are plenty of people out there who love the fact that GNOME is locked down. Uh, if you want to use your computer in a, uh, or you, you do a certain task, there's a set way that you do it and you don't deviate from it. You just, it, 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 your, your work, your task will get done 
as long as you follow the set way that you're supposed to finish that task. And some people actually enjoy that. A lot of us don't. Um, but I think that's why the whole argument of there's going to be something perfect or fix all of the issues that we have really isn't ever going to happen because there are going to be people who genuinely believe that GNOME and GTK is just night and day better than KDE, while the same person who's using KDE believes the same thing about KDE. You're never going to have everyone be right and using the same thing, enjoying it the same way. I don't, I don't think that can ever happen. Um, yeah. Um, so that is a good transition into the main topic. So um, there were there were, when I was thinking about that the, this there was many ways we could we could have you know meandered into this topic. So you know we could talk about the fierce loyalty that the Gen two guys have for Gen two, and the fierce loyalty that the Arch guys have for Arch, and uh, the fierceness and possessiveness that they have towards their distribution that they'll actually fight each other over which one's better. Mm -hmm. Um. And, uh, you know, God bless their souls, those Gen 2 guys. They are in the comments below right now saying, this doesn't look like a Gen 2 install. Mm -hmm. And um, first of all, you're right. This is not a Gen 2 install. Good on you. You, re you recognize that. This isn't an install of any kind, actually. This is a podcast. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, you know, I, like I have fierce loyalty to Arco Linux. I love Arco Linux because it works really well on my computer and I've had so many problems with so many other distributions lately just Artix, but you know, I've had problems with other ones as well. And there's a reason why I keep coming back to Arco because it works for me. Uh, but that being said, I try to realize that that's for me. It's not for everybody. But also that in the end, Linux is flawed. Like it, like yes, right now my Arco setup, as I was talking about before we started recording, is really good and it's working really well. But there are things on it right now that I would like to fix. So every once in a while, for whatever reason, my keyboard will stop working. Uh, and I thought it was the keyboard, but I switched out the keyboard and it, ha you know, it just stops working. The other one started, stopped working too. Don't know what it is. Doesn't happen on any other distro. It's really weird. Doesn't happen very often, so it's not that annoying. I put up with it. You know, just a matter of plugging, unplugging, it and plugging back in, works fine. Uh, uh, there's a like a every once in a while, Pycom just crashes on me. Don't know why. Doesn't happen very often. Maybe once a week. It's annoying. Uh, but every, um, something that I've come to realize as I've been doing long-term reviews and short-term reviews and distro first looks and all this stuff is that there's not a single Linux distribution out there that has no flaws. I mean, the, every single one of them has something wrong with it that just is going to piss me off. And it doesn't matter which one I chose. Uh, on Ubuntu, for whatever reason, OBS does not like recording things when it's not... Uh, in focus like if it's not on, a, on the right mo monitor and in focus it doesn't record anything else anywhere else it just freezes the video freezes mm -hmm. that happens on several other distributions too that's an obs problem but still the you know it, there's these flaws in every single distribution it just you know it happens linux mm -hmm. is not a perfect operating system i could go to windows um shutter you know <laughs> uh and, and discover that there are just as many flaws on windows as you know i ever had on you know linux because for one thing the fan curves on windows for my computer don't work like mm -hmm. um i don't well, I mean the, and, the, and that's the thing like expecting perfection from things that are made by people who are not perfect like it come i mean there there's you're never going to find the perfect thing for everyone ever you'll find the thing that's perfect for you eventually it's it's perfect for you no problems but you're not ever the thing is is everything's temporary like you might find i don't know like let's just say down the line you install debian and it's absolutely perfect there's no problems once everything just works you don't have any bugs whatsoever a year from now they're going to push out some bs security update that is going to break something 
Like mm -hmm. perfection in of itself is temporary. You won't have it for forever. Um, like, I, I know, I mean, Lewis would probably disagree with me here, but plan nine is by no stretch of the means perfect. And, well, and I, the fact that you can't connect to the internet, <laughs> I think, yeah, I, think yeah. I, I think we can all agree that, that, uh, yeah, not perfect. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, that's the thing. Like you're, for him, he absolutely loves Plan 9. Couldn't get enough of it. He's integrated it into, like, how he works on his computer. And, like, that's, I mean, that's sort of what I'm getting at. Like, you'll never find a perfect thing. As as soon as I'm off of Plan 9, I probably won't ever come back. Into, it was it was nice checking it out. But I'll probably never come back to it. It's not interesting. Or it's not, it's not that it's not interesting. It's that it's not usable for me. Right. Um, but everyone's different. He loves playing. He uses it all the time. The, the idea that you're going to find this perf perfect distro is just, it's outrageous. It's, no, the thing though is, is, is it really worth getting into an argument or actually getting yourself upset over whether or not someone else thinks that their distribution is better than yours? I don't like that's the thing that I don't think a lot of people understand. Like you have a choice in getting upset, you know, like something drops and hits your foot. It hurts really bad. You have a deliberate, like mental choice at whether or not you're going to suffer through that pain and then just move on through the day or let it affect the rest of your day being pissed off. Oh, man, my, my toe hurts. Couldn't that toe wouldn't be hurting if I hadn't dropped that thing. But at the end of the day, like it's your choice as to whether or not it's going to ruin your day. And hearing someone else say that Debian, uh, like I've never had any problems with Debian. Debian works perfect. You're an idiot because you had problems letting that up, like get, get you upset enough to the point where you spend six hour, hours arguing about it probably not worth it man you're not really getting anywhere like why waste your time uh whatever works for you works for you keep using it uh, i yeah. don't know the the loyalty that people have in their distros is uh it's adorable but it's also kind of infuriating because and, and like i suffer from it too but at the end of the day the, the it's all just Linux. I mean, Ooh. seriously, I'm using like kernel 5.14 point something or whatever. You're probably using Linux kernel 5.14 whatever. It's literally the same shit. It doesn't matter mm -hmm. what package manager we have on top of it. If you wanted to try hard, if you like Pac-Man enough that you wanted to use it on Ubuntu, you could. Um, like, I don't know why you'd want to, but you could do so. I mean, you could do it. Um I've watched a video of somebody who did do it. You know, uh, if you wanted mm -hmm. to use Pac-Man on Gen 2, uh, Mental All, All has a video on how to do it. You know, mm -hmm. uh, so it, at the end of the day, your attachment to your distro makes very little sense because your attachment really is just to uh, the aesthetics of it, really. The, 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 the superficial parts on top that sit on top of the same thing we all use it's you know the package manager and really that's it because uh you can use dwm on any distro you want uh, actually here, here's a good here's a good way of breaking it down to people and and really highlighting just how ridiculous it is that you fight and argue over your distro what cheese do you like like what's your favorite cheese dude i'm an american guy american cheese american cheese all right <laughs> my favorite is pepper jack would you and i ever spend six hours arguing over How which one's better dare you like pepper jack cheese you mm -hmm. fucking traitor of the <laughs> what are you a communist Dude, i'm a real <laughs> sleaze bag i like the pepper jack like oh. for one here's here's the here's the crazy part you know right now in this conversation you're not going to convince me that american cheese is better because that's your preference i know that i'm not going to get convince you that pepper jack is the best even though i like it why would we spend six hours BSing around, arguing, degrading one another because of, of your what you literally like? Especially it, see, when, so you know, what? I like pepper jack cheese too. <laughs> well, and, and, and here's the thing: six months from now, your opinion might change. Also, it doesn't matter at the end of the day because guess what? Every grocery store carries both. 
So, whatever you want. Buy some of both. Put them in between two slices of bread. You got an amazing grilled cheese sandwich. Mm -hmm. You know? (laughs) I don't actually don't know how well they'd combine, but it doesn't matter because you know what? Experimenting is the slice of life. But that's the thing is like, yes, I have a preference for Arco Linux, but you know what? I like Ubuntu too. I have nothing wrong with Ubuntu. Just like I have a huge preference for DWM. Like DWM is my window manager of choice. It's the one I enjoy. I don't, I like switching to other ones and trying them out. And I have a huge hate on for our, for our X monad. I can't stand Haskell. Haskell can't stand me. It's an equal amount of hatred on both sides of that argument. Uh, But just because I'm a big DWM guy doesn't mean I can't enjoy. I mean, I spent an hour yesterday ricing Awesome Window Manager. You wouldn't know it because OBS didn't record the damn thing. But uh, (laughs) I I spent an hour ricing. It was good. I learned a lot of Lua in that hour. Like, Mm. uh, I'm not necessarily saying I really like Lua. I think it has some really you know, weird traits, but it's not the weirdest language I've ever come across, you know? So it's, it was really nice. Uh, it, and I had a good time doing it and I can understand why people like using awesome window manager because it's basically DWM with a ton more features, you know, it's cool. Um, and this loyalty to your distro is, you know, fine, but people have the same kind of loyalty to window managers. Like there's guys out there, terminal for life i'm just looking at you right now man Mm -hmm. loves the i3 like Mm -hmm. he will defend i mean he literally made a video when i said bspwm was a little bit better literally said a little bit better on the thumbnail and he made a video you know to argue against it which is you know i love the video it was fantastic but Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know just because i liked bspwm just a little bit better doesn't mean i hated i3 you know, I, mm-hmm. I three was my first time in manager. It will always hold a space in my heart. I use it at least once a week. I think it's great. Mm-hmm. It's not my window manager. I don't care. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it. And I'm not going to say he's a horrible person, obviously, for liking I three. I mean, that'd be, I mean, he's my friend. He can use whatever mm-hmm. he wants to use, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. The fact that he can make i3 using i3 look like a professional is actually using i3. I mean, that man knows really how to use i3. Uh, you want to learn how to use i3? Watch some of his videos, and he'll make you feel very inferior about your <laughs> abilities to use the tiling window manager. Uh, but the the point is, you use what you like to use, and you have to realize that other people get to use what they like to use too, and uh. Just because you like to use one thing doesn't mean you can't also like to use some other things. Mm-hmm. So it, it's a uh, the the fierce protectiveness that people have over their their distros and their window managers and their their desktop environments. I mean, people there 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 are people out there. I don't understand these people. I mean, this is the one group of people I can't get you know my head around. They love GNOME. I mean, like that's how you started out the conversation. Like they love mm-hmm. GNOME. Like they they literally will live and die by the sword of gnome and, and they just love it i don't understand these people like i i those are the people that those are the people i could spend six hours arguing with because i have such a fierce hatred of gnome it's mm-hmm. irrational uh really because it's just a desktop environment uh controlled by a bunch of you know bad people uh <laughs> you know <laughs> But but see the thing though is is even as strong as your opinion is, it, it, you're you're I, I guess you're just not one of these true basement dwellers who hasn't gotten out and had a uh, a human interaction in like years and hasn't had the opportunity to have a little bit of conflict in their life and I don't know have something real to talk about because really as as fierce as your hatred of Gnome is, you still watch Gardner Bryant he he loves Gnome you. You're not like I think the problem is is a lot a, a lot of the people that we're talking about who have a problem with how much they like their distro or or it, it creates a problem socially for them. It, these are the same type of people who really just need they need more interaction because they need they do they, they, need, they need to get out and get some sunlight for a little while yeah. walk around the backyard. Uh, you, know, and, you know, go out, me. go outside, touch some grass, you know, like just, just <laughs> shit. I mean, really, in all honesty, if, you, if you're going to spend uh, the, the 
prime majority uh, or the prime majority of your day arguing about desktop environments with somebody, you you probably don't need need to just go outside and touch grass. You probably need to go outside, get naked, and lay with some grass because smoke some grass. <laughs> that too, man. Like good night, because it's just it's not worth anything. And at the end of the day, you might as well just be arguing about what type of cheese you like. It it really doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, and and too, I I think what what fervors a lot of the like the hatred and the like um the outgoingness uh of attacking others uh who disagree with your opinion is I, I I think what it has to do with is people are worried that if a lot of other people are interested and and are not interested in what you use or what, what whoever is having this argument is using, they're worried that well if everybody starts, let, let's just say you're a GNOME lover and everybody loves i3 and you have arguments with people who are i3 lovers all day, you probably get the idea that, well, people aren't go- – there's not going to be enough development in what I like and it's just going to disappear. Look, that ain't going to happen, okay? Don't – just because a whole bunch of – I mean, if half the world loved – and I mean absolutely loved BSDs – and the whole, the majority of the world went over to using OpenBSD or just BSDs in general. Linux is still going to exist. I mean, shit, Plan 9 still exists and it's still getting development today. So whatever you use, don't just because other uh, a majority of other people like to use something else other than what you you like to use, it doesn't mean that you're not going to get development. It doesn't mean what you like to use is going to disappear. That's the glory of open source. As long as you like it, and hell, even if you can't develop for it, most likely there's five other people around the world who enjoy it. Well, yeah, just as much as you do. If you like something, if if you're so invested in like something, you're. I mean, yes, you're a unique little, you're a, a unique little snowflake and sunflower and all that bullshit. Uh, but you're not so unique as to have that interest by yourself, because we guarantee you, there's at least some pe- other people out there that also have those same interests. It's just, I mean, there are only so many desktop environments slash distros slash window manager slash whatever that you can be interested in. I mean, I think distro watch has like 230 or 240 distros. Half of those are going to be things like Rebecca black OS and uh, Ubuntu CE, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and so- see, here's the funny thing as dead as Hannah Montana Linux is there, there are people and, I only know this because I was joking around with, I, I know people who still have it installed and use it today. Like not as their daily driver, but they play around with it and use it. Like it doesn't matter what you like, man. It ain't going to disappear. It, it really isn't. It's fine. It might not be what the majority of people like. You might get in into an even deeper sub niche of people who like what you like, but don't argue with people because you think your shit's going to go away. It ain't going to happen. There is a rational argument for saying something might disappear because there have been many distributions that have been abandoned or stopped being developed over the last how many ever years that just gone away because they weren't popular enough or the developers didn't have enough time. That does happen, but the vast good chance is, you know, you having such fierce protective over it over your distro and trying to convince other things, that's not going to make such a, dis- uh, a, a difference because at the end of the day, and what this all boils down to, is that it doesn't matter if you spend six hours showering at me about how awesome Linux Mint is. I'm never going to change my mind. Okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, and I could s- stand there with, uh, I, you know, I could paint my entire body in blue and wear a hat that has, you know, like an Arco Linux logo on it. You know, um, that's not going to change your mind. It's going to make you run away screaming, you know, but, you know, it's not, it's not going to change your mind. You can't, there is no argument in any scenario where you can convince the other person in such an argument that their opinion is wrong. You can't uh-huh. go, you can't go up to Joshua or any of our Gen 2 adorable followers who love Gen 2 and bleed compiling their browsers, you know, every day. 
Mm-hmm. You're never going to change their mind that our Arch is better or Ubuntu is better. It's just not. And mm-hmm. that's okay. You know, mm-hmm. like, you're not going to change my mind. I'm not going to change your mind. And at the end of the day, uh, you're just not going to. And that's just the way it is. And that's why it, the, the whole argument is stupid because you can't. The only re- only good time to have an argument, a, a civilized argument at least, is when there's an opportunity for actual change on either side. You know, when, when mm. both sides are equally open minded to say, well, you know, oh, you know, well, okay, maybe Linux Mint is okay and I could, you know, come around to it using it as a daily distro or whatever. Uh, but for the vast majority of people who are so entrenched in their distros, or their desktop environments or window managers or whatever, you're never going to change his mind. So the, mm-hmm. it, and they're never going to change your mind. So just don't have the argument. It just it doesn't make any sense, right? Uh, what we want to end on because we are running out of time. Uh, imagine that we we're at a, <laughs> we're at an hour already. <laughs> like we're at an hour. Uh, surprisingly, not a record. Sometimes we're just starting the main mm-hmm. topic at an hour. So we're really good. Yep. Um, what I want to end on is that if you are in tre- if if you hate something so much, like whether it's you know you hate Arch or you hate Ubuntu or you hate Linux Mint or you hate GNOME, whatever, I challenge you to install it and use it for a week. Uh-huh. Uh, I did. Okay, so everybody knows my opinion on Linux Mint. So I installed it on hardware and I used it for a week. Didn't change my mind much on Linux Mint. Uh, it did change my mind a little bit on Cinnamon. Cinnamon is actually a fairly good, you know, desktop environment. Kind of like it. Uh, it reminds me a lot of XFC. I don't know why you wouldn't just use XFC because I happen to like XFC a little bit better. But I used it. Uh, and now at least I can say when somebody says, well, why do you hate Linux Mint? Y'all, you probably never use Linux Mint. Well, you want it? I have it on video. I did, in oh, fact, okay. install Linux Mint. So... My challenge to you is if you hate something so much that you will get on the internet and get into forums and arguments and stuff, go install the thing you hate and spend mm-hmm. some time with it. Because the worst that's going to happen is you're going to have more ammunition for your argument. Because you maybe yeah, and you're going to have you're going to have much, much, much more solid footing in an argument uh, as to why you don't like it because you have rational reasons. Right. Like, so go install something you hate today uh, and. Uh, be miserable for the next week and you can thank me next week yeah so anyways all right <laughs> all right so uh every week we do this thing called apps of the week picks of the week um, it still says apps of the week in the the, the notion thing uh, it's supposed to be picks of the week it can literally be anything it doesn't have to be an app but uh, usually it's apps so uh, tyler uh, you chose something today i'm not actually sure i found a link to so i can't actually show it on lo- on thing because there's actually two things called mitch for android so uh, what is this thing you're talking about? Mitch is a little application that you can get. I, I'm pretty sure I got it off F Droid. You might be able to get it off the Aurora store is as well. Is this the itch.io thing? Yep. All it's right. just itch for Android and absolutely love it. Um, if, if you like itch, you like, um, I don't know, more indie style games, uh, definitely check out Mitch for Android. It's it's a great it's a great Android app for itch. Um, absolutely fantastic. So I'm glad you said uh, it still says apps of the week because mine is an app 100%. Yeah. yeah. So this looks interesting. Can you play like, any itch.io game? Uh, well, I mean, as long as it's made for Android. Long yes. Made- I, I yeah. thought it was going to be like some cool, like a streaming service for itch.io. That'd be really cool. <laughs> that uh, would be. Um, but it, it, it it, if you haven't ever used it, I recommend just downloading and at least trying it only because you'd be surprised at how many games there are for Android on itch. Um, it's a really nice, really, it's a really nice app. Highly recommend it. Cool. All right. So my app is called, let's see if I, it's called Pancella. And basically what this is, is a notation app. So it's a... So if you've used Flameshot, Flameshot oh. has some annotation stuff in it, but th- that it's that is meant for taking screenshots and then you can add annotations afterwards. This is for adding annotations pretty much to anything, and uh, it has 
it has a screenshot tool, but it also allows you to do a ton of other stuff. I mean, just a ton of other stuff. It has color picker. Uh, it has uh, like a laser pointer thing. It has a highlighter. It just has a ton of stuff. And it just sits on top of, you know, it just opens up up at the top of your screen. And it's kind of meant for if you have like a touch screen device. So you can actually use like a, maybe a pencil or something like that if, you, if you, you're if so high tech about it. But you could use your, you know, your mouse or whatever you wanted to. Uh, I did. Uh, it's actually really, really good. And there's just a ton of stuff that you can do. You can put shapes on stuff. You can draw arrows. You know, basically skadoodle the whole thing if you wanted to do with a pen. Uh, and it's just great. And it can be done on literally anything you do. And it's available uh, everywhere. Uh, Debian-based, Arch-based Linux, um, Windows, Mac OS. It's there. So it's really, really cool. Free and open source. It's on GitHub. So uh, definitely check that out. It's Like I said, it was really, really nice. Um, and I... I'm not much of a user of it. I just, you know, found it and used it for a little while. Flamshot kind of does everything that I need to do in terms of, you know, annotation and stuff like that. Uh, and it has all my key bindings and stuff for it. So uh, it's not necessarily for me, but I thought it was cool enough to share. So that's uh, that's Pancella. Uh, really cool. All right, man. Uh, we did go over an hour. So that's like the fourth time in a row we've went over an hour. Uh Technically, this podcast, I don't know if anybody knows this, but our original goal for this podcast was 45 minutes. Uh, when, 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 we, when we first down, sat down to, uh, you know, did our neg- negotiations for how long we wanted our podcast to be, 45 minutes was the time. Uh, and when Martin was my co-host, our agreement was a half an hour. <laughs> Uh, there's no way we'd make it if our goal was a half an hour I don't, not even a chance i don't think we ha- have the 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 talent between the two of us to not bullshit for at least i think like uh, i could actually go check and see between you and i when since you and i've been doing this which we've been doing this now since uh, i'm gonna say may-ish it's been a while so we've been going for quite a while uh, I don't think we've done a single one below forty minutes. I think they've all been at least higher than that. I'm I'm positive. I'd be surprised if we actually hit forty five minutes for just one of them. Yeah, it, I, I think there was one there that we had like was like a forty two minute podcast, and I, I don't remember what the what the scenario was. I'm sure one of us had to be sick. Maybe one of us was dying or something. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. All right. Anyways, uh, uh, that is it for us this week. Uh, I have no clue what's coming up next week because somebody hasn't put their thing in the document yet. Um, I don't know who that means. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so we'll do something next week. I'm sure that is. We do have a challenge coming up. That'll either be in episode 60, which is in like four episodes, or it'll be in ex- episode 65. That's all going to have to be, depend on my hardware situation. I have a plan. Uh, and because I'm the master of all, depending on when, uh, episodes are, I get to choose when we actually do that pot, that, that challenge. Uh, mm-hmm. so, uh, we, we will do it before episode 70, but it'll, uh, it'll be either 60 or 65. Anyway, so, uh, before we go, I should take a moment to thank my current patrons. If I can, you know, hit the button here, Devon, Chris, East Coast Web, Jet, Gen 2 is fun too, Patrick, L, Marcus, Meglin, Sven, Jackson, Ivan Tool, Joshua Lee, Steve A, Mitchell, Art Center, Merrick Camp, J Dog, and the BSDs Rock. I think my patrons enjoy changing their names to things just to make me say them out loud. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's guaranteed that, that that's the reason why. The Gen 2 is fun too guy, I'm pretty sure that's mm-hmm. Peter. Um so uh yeah. Be careful what you wish for, because I will meme you. Like, 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 <laughs> like, I, like, I will meme it. <laughs> like, I will get right into it. It's great. Uh, so, uh, Gen 2 is fun, too. And uh, we'll see you next time. Boy. Mm-hmm.